Hey guys, Dean with ET Transport. Been a while, back to see you. Talking today about flat bedding in the wintertime. I think we did a video a while back on flat bedding and what we like about it, what we don't like about it. Today, it's, it's more about what's all entailed with doing flat bedding in the wintertime, as opposed to being in a dry van or a, a roll tight or anything like that, a reefer. With the flat beds, everything's exposed for one. So, you know, like you have to make sure that placement of your stuff is right. A lot of people don't don't know about the flatbeds is, you know, a little bit of snow you might get away with if it's just a bit of dust and, you know, you drive away and it blows off real fast. But if you got like three or four inches of snow on there, you got to shovel that off because you can get a ticket for it. It would be the same as not having your load strapped down properly. It's an unsafe load. It's just that pieces of ice and stuff can blow off your trailer. So what the ministry likes to see is that you clean off as much as possible. Like, I mean, obviously if it's like frozen right to the deck, you, you can't get it off, but you're trying to get as much off as possible. With the uh, the dry vans, the snow's up on the top, it's a little bit harder, but a lot of the companies have the brushes that they drive underneath that try to clear off a bit of that snow. So that's that's one thing. Another thing with flat bedding is you want to make sure you got a real good set of gloves, some nice outdoor wear because you are in the elements. You know, you're not just going out and opening a set of doors on the back of the trailer and you're back in your truck again. You're out there, you're throwing either straps or chains, binders, your hands. You better have man hands because you're going to feel it. <laughs> there are many days where you, you can't feel the tips of your fingers and sometimes you even got to go inside your truck and warm up for a little bit. Don't get frostbite on your fingers. Doing it long enough, they just kind of, it grows on you. <laughs> With the chains and binders, if you don't have a storage spot for them, you want to make sure that you keep them lubed up and greased. You want to do that through the summertime as well, but especially in the winter because they're going to pick up a lot of road grime and, and this brine. This brine that they put on the road is is the worst stuff in the world, I swear to God. I don't know if they use it in all the different states and stuff like that, but here in Canada, Ontario especially, they spray this liquid salt on the roads and it's horrible. It's a, an electronic eater. It just destroys anything electrical and uh, your straps and stuff all get really crispy. With the strap, I think we, we, we touched on it last time and a few people commented, which was great comments, you know, like, why do you keep the straps on the trailer when it's better to put them in the side of your, your truck? And a thousand percent it is. It's uh, definitely better to have it in the side of your truck, in, in a box or something, anywhere that is not getting wet and freezing because frozen straps suck. When it comes to doing the strapping and stuff like that, especially you know on an exposed uh, flatbed, if you are leaving the straps on the trailer, which a lot of the companies do, right? They'll, they'll leave them on the trailer. If you're working for a company that does that, don't birdcage the, the straps, especially in the wintertime. It sucks in the summer, but in the wintertime, if you make that strap, you're rolling it up and you're not holding it straight, it just freezes against the sides and it's damn near impossible to get off. The only way to get your straps off is by using your bar backwards and it's, it's horrible. So don't do that. Roll them up nice and straight. Uh, if they are frozen, you know, you just take your time with it. That's all you can do is you, you roll them out slowly, take your time. I like to kind of get a little bit of it unrolled and then pull it through the pull it through the pockets. And then when you throw it, it's it's obviously like you what a lot of people are used to throwing it backwards, throwing the strap instead of throwing the chain. That's almost impossible. It's really hard to do. You almost have to use the chain. Some guys that do that all the time maybe are more used to it, but I've always been, I've always thrown from the chain end myself. I think somebody commented maybe in some states or something, it's illegal to throw it from the chain end. Uh, that's, that's the first I heard of it, so it's interesting for me to hear that. You guys can leave comments on that if you want. Let me know what states that is in and if that's, uh, if that's an actual law. Otherwise, if you are throwing it from the chain end, you know, just obviously, Make sure you're aware of what's on the other side of the trailer. If you see people walking around, obviously don't throw the, the chains. Don't be afraid to yell out, you know, throwing it over or whatever, you know, look out, watch out, have a spotter, any, any of, the, of the above, right? Tarps, some companies use a lot of tarps. Some people don't use many tarps. A lot of the tarping companies and stuff have now gone to curtain sides and roll tights and stuff like that. If you are throwing the tarps, if you are doing tarping in the wintertime, be very careful, the tarps are very slippery. Some of the product you're gonna stand on can be very slippery. It doesn't take much to, you know, just misplace a step and then you're down on the ground. And depending on where you, even if you're falling off just this, 
that's still a long drop. Imagine being up on the top of some products. A lot of companies now, they have safety spots for throwing your, your tarps over and they have the, the ladders and stuff you can climb over. When you're throwing your tarps over, make sure that you know, you're doing it very safely. The tarps obviously are not gonna be nearly as pliable as they are in the summertime. You know, we strap them onto the top of the trailer like this and uh, the snow gets on them, the ice gets on them. So you gotta be careful of that, obviously. Make sure that you, you get them all tightened down good and they look pretty, because there ain't nothing sexier than a pretty load on a flatbed, right? One of the reasons I do it is because everything's for show. You know, when you're driving down the road, everybody can look at that load and see how it's chained or, or strapped or tarped. And you know, a, a perfectly tarped load is just like a work of art in, 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 my, in my eyes. I don't do a whole lot of tarping. I've done a crap load of it in the past, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a beautiful sight when you see it. You're gonna wanna have like a hammer with you. Your, your bar works as well, but you're gonna wanna maybe have a hammer, some, some alcohol, definitely some lube spray, like uh, some sort of a penetrant, something that doesn't freeze up very easy. They're all little things that are probably gonna make your, your life a little bit easier while you're doing the flatbedding. That's, that's really gonna go with any truck and trailer that we're gonna be using, but you know, especially with the, with the binders and stuff like that, you might even wanna go as far as having like a butane torch and stuff like that, depending on how cold the environment is and how much snow you're driving through and stuff like that, because along the rails, underneath the rails where the sliders slide underneath, they can get all bunged up with ice and snow and stuff like that so if we can either whack it with our bar or we can if we got a decent hammer a mallet something like that you can crack underneath there and break some of that ice and snow loose and it'll make it easier to slide the straps along the the rails probably forgetting a million things it's uh flat bedding to me is just uh, a natural thing it's because i've been doing it for so many years flat bedding in the winter is definitely next level it's, like i mean there's a lot more things that come into play than pulling a a dry van you know when you're hooking up to a trailer, you're pinned into that trailer and you know that you're gonna drive. Now you don't really have to touch that freight again until you get to your next delivery. Where flatbedding, A, you're gonna freeze in the elements, getting your load strapped down, getting everything perfect. Then, you know, you're gonna wanna check that load from time to time on the way up there as well. Especially if you can't get your deck fully cleaned off. Let's say this is, you know, like this is nice, this will all come off. But say that's ice and you go and you do your, your pickup while you're at your pickup, you know, that ice may be underneath the wood that they're gonna put underneath the dunnage or whatever they're gonna leave underneath. That gives that extra chance of product moving. So you really have to make sure you get that cranked down good and winched on. And then again, when you get to your next stop, you're gonna wanna get out, you're gonna wanna check all your chains, your, your straps, your binders, everything like that. Make sure everything is still nice and tight and that product hasn't shifted at all. You're probably gonna, you know, slow it down a little bit obviously in the winter we should be doing that regardless of what we're doing you know there's no product is that important that it needs to get where it has to be in the winter time especially where we're taking safe at risk you know slow it down you're going to get there most companies will understand that you know like i mean if you got a 30 minute drive don't leave 30 minutes before you got to be there you know try to leave yourself uh, a safety window where you know if you get in a traffic jam or there's an accident which there's always going to be in the winter time you know somebody's spun out somebody's broke down flashing lights on the side of the road or snow plows there's a million things that are going to slow you down in the winter time so make sure that you account for that so you're not having to now speed up and start taking chances that are going to get you into a situation that you really don't want to be in that's about it uh you know for for today anyways if I missed anything, make sure you leave comments, let me know. Love reading everything that you guys got. For a while there, I got quite busy with a bodybuilding competition I was in, we did well. It took away from a, li a little bit of me reading back into some of the comments that you guys were reading and stuff like that. Uh, I do love reading them. I just didn't get back to a lot of you guys like, like I was trying to do. If you guys have any topics you would like, uh, like to see us talking about or for me to cover, leave it in the comments, let us know. Um, we'll read through and we will try to get to them ASAP. Yeah, mostly make sure that uh, you guys are being safe out there on the road. Love all you guys. I want to see you all out there one day. I've been running into a crap load of you at different truck stops here and there. It's great to see that and uh, puts a smile on my face for, for a couple hours afterwards anyways. Anyways, uh, make sure you guys keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down. 
and we'll see you guys on the next video.